Welcome to Primecast, March 22nd, 2019. I'm Will Hungerford, lead developer of Privateer Press and your host of Primecast. With me are my two co-hosts, convention manager John Swinkles. Oh, hello. And adorable pig Hamilton. The most important co-host. Now official co-host of Primecast. Uh, if you've never watched the show before, this is one of the two monthly shows we do. Uh, this is sort of our talk show hangout podcasty kind of thing where we get people from different departments you normally don't see on the show come on. Like Doug Seacat will be on later. Uh, we just talk to people about what's going on in general that is not one of the dev chats you see every week or the get your paint on that you see every week. In fact, let's just bring up the stream schedule now so you can see the kind of stuff we do if you're not used to us. Behold. Every Wednesday, every Thursday, dev hang out with myself, Jeff Olson, and Oz Schoonover where we talk about stuff going on with the games and development. Thursdays is get your paint on with Jordan Lamb where he paints and talks to you about painting. And then we have the two special shows, Staff Showdown and Primecast Live. Staff Showdown, we throw down. Live battle reports, Primecast Live, you're watching it now. There's your dates, there's your Nailed times, it. check us out. Now, one thing about Primecast Live is we are live on Twitch and Facebook, so chat is just flying right now. It's and already we, rather robust. We will talk to all of you as much as we can throughout it. That's part of the fun of Primecast is being having live interaction. So if you've got questions, bring them up. You know, we'll miss some of them. We won't get to get to everyone. Sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are very happy looking at the early comments that everyone dug the rave music that Tony was playing. <laughs> uh, as always, this is being produced by our video overlord, Tony Konacek. Tony, thank you for the sweet beats. Felt like I was in the 90s again, like I should have mm -hmm. been in the Matrix, just dodging bullets. I'd be an agent. They'd jump in my body. And be oh, yeah, agent, you'd, so. be, you'd be done. That'd be done. <laughs> uh, before we jump into today's topics, we've got a couple things to talk about. Mm -hmm. Big announcements and things you've probably heard before, but if you missed them, I'll let you know. First off, Mini Crate. There's a new Mini Crate model available. The Ancestral Guardian Angel. For those of you that saw the Oblivion artwork, er, artwork? I can't talk today. <laughs> the Oblivion artwork we showed on the Dev Hangout, and you were like, what's that flying thing attacking on my Deimos? It's not this. This is straight up Doctor Who Ancestral Guardian. Right? Don't blink on the base. Scare your opponents. Have a good time. Uh, you have till April 19th to order that one at mini-crate.com. Then it cycles over to the next one. Uh, for the Legend of the Five Rings mini crate, you have till April 5th to get Bayushi Soju. So time is running out on the sweet Scorpion Clan champion. Uh, and also, don't forget, if you do a six-month sub of the, the, mini, the War Machine of Hordes mini crate line, you get Bride of Arcadius. Um, so cool. Yeah. I, it's, I'm a Minions fan. I'm also a horror fan, so this is a, was a must-pick-up model for me. Because uh, I'm definitely going to try and paint the white streak in the hair. Classic, mm -hmm, classic mm -hmm, Bride mm -hmm, of Frankenstein mm -hmm. style. Absolutely. Uh, beyond Mini Crate, Lock and Load is coming right up June 21st through 23rd. Where you can yes, come indeed. get your Primecast live directly delivered to your face uh, with all of us. <laughs> if you want to come hang out, come to seminars, do the live chats, uh, and also just you know play in all the awesome tournaments, watch the Iron Gauntlet World Finals, yep, yep. get your first hands on a ton of new models. So many, and like, and we always you know like drop some kind of like crazy surprise info at that show as well because well it's ours so we can. Yeah, there's always a keynote. Things always happen during the keynote. You know. Madness ensues. Come hang out. People Speaking of madness ensuing, it is already basically like a third sold out. So uh, tickets have been flying. So if you're on the fence, don't wait. Yeah, come see us. Come hang out. We'll high five. Many Speaking of the stream fives. schedule and shows, I want to remind everybody that uh, Adepticon is next week. At sure the 27th is. through the 31st. A bunch of us will be there. Mm -hmm. uh, when I say a bunch of us, I mean all of Dev. And Jordan are going to be there. So there is no dev chat next week, and there is no get your panel next week. But all of dev, all of our hobby people, and all of our convention people. We're just all going over there. Pretty much. There will be, on Wednesday, though, a replacement dev chat. Doug Seacat is going to invade, and there will be a lore chat next Wednesday. So if you want to come talk to Doug about strictly lore things, come. Hang out. It'll be a good time. Oh, and we've been doing the Infernal Friday videos. We've had a lot of questions about those. I want to remind everybody, every, the Infernal Friday videos are every other um, week. Yep. So the next one is March 29th. Tony, who's in that one? Uh, the next one next week is Doug Hamilton mm -hmm. talking about more sculpting stuff. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Sweet. And then we got, uh, we got a future one with Danny talking about uh, building some terrain and the giant infernal tower he's working on. Which we've been showing so that on the, the terrain uh, Instagram. Yep. The PP Hobby terrain Instagram. That's cool. Uh, Gearbox Grinds Lore Chat, will we be discussing Lumberjacks and Timberjacks again? That's up to Seacat. Seacat, whatever y'all want to talk to Seacat about. In fact, 
Let's, let's talk about what we're going to be talking about today on Primecast, yes. so you know what you want to see. Uh, first off, we're going to talk about the new releases coming out this month. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to get Oz in here, and we've got something really cool for everybody from Monster Apocalypse to check out. Uh, we've got, uh, we're going to physically show it to you. I think you're going to dig it. Then we're going to talk about some other stuff coming up in development. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to get Seacat in here. I have no idea what he wants to talk about. Never do. Doug's just going to talk about whatever he wants to. Then we're going to talk about upcoming conventions, Adepticon, Lock and Load, some other stuff. Uh, and then we're going to kind of wrap things up. So we'll try to keep it to an hour so those of you on your lunch break can sit here and enjoy and, again, you know, talk to us. Lars Malik says, Monpok lore, I have no idea. Yeah, who knows? He talks about whatever he wants to talk about. Yeah, it would be an amazing thing. What well, would be an amazing thing? A Monpok RPG. I'm not saying we're doing that. <sighs> it just popped in my head. That would be dumb. But you don't play the monsters. No. You just play people. Yeah. And you're just running around. And, like, like you can never fight anything. That's like not there true, because you, you could be part of the Shadow Sun Syndicate and get one of them sweet suits. No, no, I think you just pay a citizen. No. And, like, there are no combat rules. There's, there's death and running. That's the worst RPG idea ever. You play I love a, it. You play a building. I love it. <laughs> the classes are buildings. Okay. Uh, right. So, welcome. Uh, I think it's trying to transition into our first topic, which is this month's new releases. So, everybody get in here, get comfy, and uh, Tony, drums, please. I can smell Will Schick and Simon Berman next to me. Right. The nostalgia. Apparently I need new shoes. So, <laughs> this month, we've got some really cool stuff coming up. Uh, we're going to start with uh, what's coming out today. Yep. So, today at your local stores, make sure you go check out, if you were interested in the Steelhead theme, Soldiers of Fortune, the Steelhead Gunner and the Steelhead Arcanist both dropped. Uh, I know we have not shown the painted, the painted models of those yet. They're... I think you should see those on the gallery pretty soon. Oh, it looks like Tony is pointing at me and screaming today. Yeah. So today. That's the, silent screaming. The, the models for those two will be coming out. Obviously, if you're playing Steelheads or you're a Merc fan, you know, the Gunner, that, that Theme Force does amazing things with weapon crews, and the Gunner's a, 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 a must-have. And then the Arcanist, I really don't care what Steelhead theme you're playing. Like, the Arcanist is a, a, a incredibly important support solo. There's something else coming out, though, this uh, today in stores that's not War Machine-related. That at first, you might not be excited about it. Till you see the thing in person. I'm excited. The Resin Apartment Building is finally coming out from Monpoc. Mm -hmm. And I'm legitimately really excited about this. I mean, the starter box comes with six, like, um, cardboard apartment buildings. Yeah, and they're the really nice cardboard snaps kind of right together. But it does feel like that's your starter product. And when you're buying all these other resin, like, skyscrapers and power plants and everything mm -hmm. else, as you're building your city, and you still have those old apartment buildings, they, they do become out of place as you build your collection. And so the resin apartment building finally lets you complete it to where your whole table can be resin pieces, which is awesome in my opinion. It, I, 100%. I, like, it makes all the difference in the world when you're looking at, at the map and the buildings on it, and when you go to destroy them. It's like, that's a solid thing I get to destroy. They're also just cool for dioramas. Like, that's, so, the buildings from Mompok have been doing, like, Mompok's doing really well right now. And, like, there's mm -hmm. a lot more people getting into it. We were just at Gamma talking to retailers, and Monster Apocalypse is, is kind of blowing up. Yeah. And one thing no that's pun intended. No, no pun intended. The buildings sell like crazy good, and one of the reasons is we found that people just use them not only for the game, but they use them for like dioramas and stuff. Like they make mm -hmm. a skyline in the background. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing like a, a forced perspective of some of your miniatures, and you want to have like a, a modern day skyline in the background, like they look good. Uh, other people have been using them for like RPGs real fast yep. to be like, okay, this is here and this is here and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So we heard all kinds of cool stories about what people were doing with their buildings, and that's 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 awesome. Um, Let's talk about what is coming out at your local stores uh, in the next uh, few days. Now, these dates say March 8th and March 15th. Yep, these happened. These already happened? These happened. Oh, these are the old ones? No, these, are just, these are just between last uh, Primecast and this one. I am, y'all, <laughs> when you work in development, you lose complete track of when things have come out. Mm -hmm. So that's the stuff coming out today. Let's talk about stuff that came out the last two weeks. Yep. Man, I don't even know where I am anymore. good stuff. So, first off, uh, two, two Fridays ago. I'm already on that Uber core. Yeah, oh, uh, it's so good. I just I want so it. Good. I want it now. Um, one of the things everybody wanted at LVO finally hit stores two weeks ago, and that was uh, Gareth 2, Gareth Eye of Vengeance. Yep, Scary Gary. Gary. Scary Gary. You guys know what he does, why he's dope. If you haven't picked him up, go get him. If you want to come grab him at Adepticon, I'll probably have him there, too. Yeah. I mean, he was one of the top sellers at LVO for us. Oh, so hands he, down. Yeah, he, sold out of him uh, beginning of day two. 
He's got the name Scary Gary for a reason. You know, he's hands down one of the best snipers we've ever released for War Machine and Hordes, and mm. just a, a, a terrifying piece that if you don't if you don't position correctly and check your threat ranges, you're just dead. Um, <laughs> You know, so retribution players in general are are pretty pretty happy about Scary Gary, and now you can go pick him up. Apparently, two weeks ago. Yeah, and then whatever. One of my favorite models ever, just because of the exuberant joy on his face mm -hmm. uh, that also sold out at OVO uh, was Armadax. Man, he's so happy. Look at him. <laughs> Armadax. Can like, can I'm gonna eat that building. I'm gonna eat that dude. Let's talk about Armadax for a second. This bro becomes immune to super damage and doesn't take damage from colliding with buildings. He is the tankiest... I, I, yeah, I'm going to say he's the tankiest monster we, that's the available. The one that's out so far, yeah. That we might ever make. Like, just like no super damage and no collisions with buildings. There would be somebody who's like, didn't take damage from colliding with like fires or buildings and no super damage in both forms. <laughs> we're just never going to do that. That's, no. that's, that's too much. That, mm. I mean, Armadex's attacks are pretty basic in terms of how much damage he can do. He's not like your your glass cannons you see mm. elsewhere. What he makes up for it is just being like, he's typically going to live to be your second monster and your, your surviving oh, monster. Easy. Uh, I say that even though last weekly Rumble, me and Oz played and the first monster I killed was Armadax, so just don't play like Oz and you'll do fine. <laughs> Oz just walked in the room by the way <laughs> and, he, I, I, and he's hiding back there so I'm just kind of like trolling him live on, on Primecast right now. It sounds like a plan. Uh, speaking of, of Terrasaurs, the other thing that came out was the specific faction building Mount Terra. My favorite building so far. The paint jobs that y'all in the community have been um, have been putting up so far have been amazing. Mm -hmm. So I, I really want to thank everybody. Like the two I see the most, I think, are this one and probably uh, the uh, the guard building. I see a lot of the harbinger shard lately too, and the harbinger shard. But this the Mount Terra. I think Mount Terra's got it the, the most. And I've seen those eggs painted in so many different ways, just mm -hmm. straight up like Yoshi eggs, the, the way the lava works. Sometimes the lava's not even red, it's different colors. Uh, the person that did blood lava, I like it, but like maybe you should talk to someone. A little creepy. I can't remember who did it, uh, but they definitely need to post their models to uh, uh, hashtag P3 Painters on Instagram. Um, I saw one where they modified that top egg that looks like you can see a little bit of the, the pterosaur about to hatch. Mm -hmm. They modified it a little bit so that you could see the eyeball looking out. Oh, that's awesome. It was so good. Tony. And so, post it. Tony, we see your message. Mm -hmm. That's why I just said that, Tony. <laughs> we, Tony Worked was, it right in. I love you so My much. My smooth segue. <laughs> Ruined. So, so apparently, last week, there were some more releases. Let's do the War Machine one first. The Negra Zero hit. Mm -hmm. the, the, the full cycle of Journeyman Zeros is almost done. Almost done. There's only one missing. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's Sorcia Zero, who... Adepticon! Oh, were we just right out saying that? We already did. Oh, cool. We said it yesterday <laughs> in an insider. <laughs> what year is it? <laughs> I don't even know what's happening anymore. <laughs> yes, Source of Zero will be out of the Depticon, everybody. So yes. finally, the cycle will be complete, and obviously Source of Zero will be hitting stores later on. But Denegra Zero is in your stores mm -hmm. now, in case you've been wanting to pick her up. And just like the uh, all the other Zero casters that debuted at a show, even though they're technically a pre-release, they're also counting as an exclusive, so you can get those on store.privateerpress.com yeah. while the show is going on. Two other questions that popped up on chat real fast. Uh, JP Great One says, does this mean Horde's Warlocks, Warlock Zeros are coming out? Uh, no, we don't have any announcements for those, uh, so I would not expect those. Don't expect those in 2019, just yep. to be honest with you. 2019 is the year of Oblivion and Infernals, so if they come out, it'll be 2020 at the earliest before there are Horde's Zero Lessers, effectively. Mm -hmm. And uh, Qu Quasitor says, uh, what other pre-releases will be at Depticon? It's a pretty big list. Is there any other one you want to spoil? Um, let's see here. Why you think about that? Somebody's mm. asking about Gordon Zero with a baby landslide. I want baby. I want Barnabas Zero, and he's just a little egg, like we were talking about earlier, and his little glow claws that'd are coming be, out. That, that, I need that. <gasps> Carver Zero and his little baby pig. <laughs> anyway, any other cool? You're brand? wearing your minions jacket, so at least you're at least you're on brand. Yeah, any other uh, uh, any other cool uh, pre-releases you want to mention? Expect to see a couple more steelheads. Okay. Uh, will the Well of Orboros be there? It will. Okay, there you go. Yeah, well of Orboros will be at Adepticon. And so. that, that thing uh, is a set piece. Like you were talking about people using the, uh, the buildings from Monster Apocalypse for dioramas and stuff like that. The yeah. well does that so well. Uh, the engineering on it, we had a chance to go over a while ago with Jordan. Uh, so good, that thing actually travels 
really well too. I was asking him about bringing it to a, the the one he painted to Adepticon. He's like, oh, no problem. Cool, sweet. Yeah. So not joking around about Horde's lessers. You know, anybody in chat who wants to talk about Horde's lessers, you know, I assume one day we'll do them, just not this year. But you know what would be really cool? It would literally just popped in my head. Madrax Zero, but he's a circle lesser. Because in the story before, mm -hmm. the, the trolls broke mm -hmm. away from, mm -hmm. from Circle. Mm -hmm. And they were like kind of being controlled by them. Madrax Zero, and Doom Shaper kind of knew what was up. But like Madrax Zero as a circle lesser would be hilarious. All right, back on topic. <laughs> uh, there are two other Monpok releases that came out uh, last week. And yep. that is uh, Yasheth, your second monster. For Lords, Lords of Cthulhu. Cthulhu, so if you're mm -hmm. if you want the more beady monster, that is absolutely Yasheth's deal. Whereas um, Cthulhuash is definitely more tricksy and supporty. Yasheth just beats people to death and has uh, you know vampiric abilities. Yeah. Uh, and he's cute. I wouldn't call that cute. He's adorable. Look at him. I. Is it swipe left or swipe right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't use Tinder. Fifty fifty. That's well, fine. I guess <laughs> swipe down. Uh, <laughs> And uh, the other one is the uh, the Lords of Cthulhu building, the the Void Gate. The Void Gate's really unique. So all the, the faction buildings have so a, a, cool a discount table. for that mm -hmm. faction's units once per turn when you spawn one. But they usually have like one other ability. Uh, the Void Gate's got two. Uh, it lets you transform a, a normal unit into a, an elite version, and it also lets you have this like telekinesis based off the building. I guess it's called psychokinesis, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, also... You know, I just expect the Zool is up there at the top right, of it. Right, And it's taking the form of the Destroyer. There is no Dana. There is only Zool. Yep. Uh, JP Great One says, how the heck do you paint all those teeth? Uh, my recommendation would take take uh, the Jack the jack Bone color, mm -hmm. uh, hit the whole thing, then grab a brown wash or a sepia wash, yep. if you want to do it quickly. Uh, so hit the whole thing with a sepia wash. Then grab the, the bone highlight and just dry brush it real fast. Yep. That'd Easy be, way to get that thing on the table and have it look good. Yep, that is a very, I mean, you can be more detailed than that. You could do layering on every individual tooth mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. But if you want a quick and dirty way, base coat, wash, dry brush. That's all Sounds it's going to take. Sounds legit to me. And JB, that, that is a simple tabletop recipe. Uh, you could obviously do like Jordan did on this one and make it look way nicer. As Avin Chaos points out, using a wash like that is like adding liquid skill. 100%. I cheat with it. All the time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nate Brooks says, we need a marshmallow monster. I couldn't agree more. Oh, that'd be dope. I like Will Pagani right there. Hey, Will Pagani, how's it going? So that's all the new releases. I think it's time to bring our first guest on, because we've been talking about what's coming up, and, and actually start getting into the meat of some of the cool stuff we're showing off. So mm -hmm. we're going to bring Oz, my boss, development, uh, development manager here at Private Press, and we're going to talk about some uh, cool stuff for Monpox. So Tony, if you would, please. The drums. Do you want? Do you want the gun? There's a gun. No, I don't want a gun. Um, also, I didn't want to scream it from the other side of the room, but the the Journeyman Zeros are 15 year anniversary of War Machine things. So Correct. It might happen on the 15 year anniversary of Hordes. It but might. That's but Hordes came out in 2006, I think. That sounds right. I, I think that sounds right. Yeah. yeah. That so, sounds accurate. So it'd be 2021. Yeah, 2021 yeah. would be 15 years of Hordes. But. Right around that 2020 2021 timeline is also going to be the 20th anniversary of Privateer Press. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be all kinds of stuff in the next mm -hmm. couple of years. Mm -hmm. Zero versions of every character every we've ever made. <laughs> Alton Zero. Z zero versions of staffers. Eris Zero. Zero version of the Witchfire trilogy? Alexia Zero. No, not Alexia Zero. The book. The first book, you get a zero version of that book. <laughs> every, everything that's FAC in the game, you get a zero version of. Mm -hmm. Ooh, um, oh so, welcome. <laughs> Oz, mm -hmm. how's it going? So you've got some. We mentioned this at Gamma. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you're here to finally show everybody what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Just show us what you got in your hand. I have a black tube. Look <laughs> at this. It's exciting. I can, I'll unroll it for you. So what See, Oz has shown everybody is we it's, announced at Gamma. It's, it's a black piece of cloth. We're doing neoprene mats for Monster Apocalypse. Yeah. Yep. I'm gonna hang, hold this in. No, we are doing. We done did. Yeah. Yes. This is the sample from the factory. Uh, uh, the first one. The first one we're doing is Island of Annihilation, which was the mm -hmm. lead kit. We mm -hmm. know that that was a limited run lead kit, and mm -hmm. they sold out. And I've seen the maps from Island of Annihilation on eBay for selling for sometimes up to $70. Yeah. Which is ridiculous. Yeah. So guess what we're going to do? Yes. We're going to make that the first neoprene mat so that everybody can get their hands on it. Mm-hmm. We will probably go back and make the first two maps that are in the starter boxes as these, potentially. Yeah. We're talking about the timing of releases. 
both for brand new maps that have never been out and the two starter maps. And that's the, the, the next part is that for all of you who've been asking about new maps, mm -hmm. that is definitely on the docket. Yep. Uh, we don't have a release date to give you just yet, but we, there are new maps coming from Monster Apocalypse as yeah. well. And the timing on this is the next couple of months. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. soon. Yeah, like this is not coming out in like November. No, of this year. No, I, I, from everything that I've been hearing, I'd anticipate in the realm of two, two and a half months. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about a number of weeks, yeah. which, which is, will probably see is a, a couple of months. for them very soon. Yeah. yeah. So can you hold it up one more time, Oz? Just so everybody can get I'll a couple looks at that. I'll hold it up in front of you this time. That's good. I already held so, it perfect. perfect. Here, I'll, I'll hold this end for you and okay, make, cool. make life Thanks. easier for the, you. Thanks. The <laughs> resolution on it is actually like really, really it's good. Really also, good. the center of it is doing interesting. Well, yeah, because weird the, the green, because it's kind of yeah. green. Yeah, yeah green yeah. screen. Uh, yeah. All of these maps yeah. are going to be black on one side. So even the starter maps are not yeah. going to be double sided because yeah. that's dumb and you need this yeah. gridded texture so it doesn't slide everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. these are really good. Really exciting. And it's been like one of the most requested things for Just flops it down there. Yeah. You need to get it back. It's so Hamilton can watch it. So. <laughs> Uh, Gearbox Red says, will paper maps also be available for new maps as well, or future maps only neoprene? We're actually talking about that right now. We do still want to do paper maps, especially for OP. Yep. But one yeah. thing we might do, and this is a big maybe, is that OP kits will have paper maps as the participation prize, with the winner prize being, this is for leagues, the crush hour will still be buildings, uh, with like leagues being one of these potentially, yeah. or at least we will sell these separately. So don't worry, like paper maps are still a good way for us to get a lot of them into your hands quickly. Yeah. Uh, Dragon Pup, we don't have an MSRP on these just yet. That information no. is all coming. We're working soon. on... Yeah, it'll be uh, really soon. Working on packaging and other things about the timing to get the announcement out. And so some of that is about MSRP and those kind of things. Yep. So, yep. yeah. Now, speaking of Crush Hour, Crush Hour is the tournament kit right now. It's had the Privateer Press HQ building in it. Mm -hmm. That's going to be rotating to the donut shop. Mm -hmm. So happy. Uh, then we announced what the next building is likely going to be. We're going to have a contest in the future. We announced what the contest for the next building was going to be. Yeah. But we didn't announce what the building was going to be because that's what the contest well, is. Well, uh, the, the building will be the contest winner. Yeah, yeah. We're going to do a contest in the future with details coming that it's for retailers. The winner of the contest, their store is going to be made into the third Crush Hour building. Mm -hmm. So if we, it'll either physically be their store if they're in a, a store location that looks looks right, or uh, it will be... Um, like say that they're in, like say they're inside a mall. Yeah, and they're yeah, like, I want I want someone inside a mall. Just we'll just do the whole mall. It'll well, like take no, no, up no, no, seven no, no. spaces. We could do their It'll name. Awesome. We'll do their name. Right. Sure. So if they're like sure. Black Knight Games, for example, we could do a Black Knight like chess piece as a building, or like you know, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, Dragon's Lair. Yep. Or things like that. If mm -hmm. my store back in Baton Rouge that I press gang that Little Wars ended up winning, it's in a strip mall. I have no idea how we're going to do that one because this is going to be like a little field with a bunch of people on it. Just do a strip mall. It'd be easy. And then Nate Brooks says, Woo Donuts, because I believe he sculpted that building. Uh, I, Tony, I thank you so for letting too. us know that Doug will be talking about Infernals and Runic Magic when he comes on. Yep. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that information, Tony. <laughs> I'm supposed to tease it. You're supposed to tease it during the drums. That's what you're supposed to do. Tony, please talk to me right now. This is, this, Tony, this is, Tony, tell them how to be professionals. You're supposed to internalize it. Okay. And then use it when relevant. Yeah. Yeah. Like when Doug so, comes on. Hey, hey speaking much, of Monpok, did you know that Doug Seacat will be talking about Infernals and Runic Magic? <laughs> did I nail it? That so, was a nice one. Just, I like that. Tony, yeah. you, you should already know this, but just like Ron Burgundy, if you put it on the teleprompter, no, I'm just going to read it. <laughs> you know yeah. this. This is not yeah. new. So is there anything else about Monpok you want to talk about? I know so, a lot of people were asking about Hammerclack. You're not, we're not showing the rules off today. Um, we might preview the rules of Hammerclack. But he's also going to be at Adepticon. Whoops, spoiler. For sale. Well, since he's going to be there next week, what so, do you want to tell us about him? Um, so he's he's an interesting monster. He's sneaky and fast in his alpha form, and then he just gets like murdery in his hyper form. How is he sneaky as a monster? So he's got cloak in his alpha form, so you can't shoot him from far away because yeah. he's underground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's got tunneler, so he's digging holes to help everybody else move around. It's the thing we previewed on Get Your Paint on yesterday. Right. He has an ability that says um, other allies that start within two spaces of him gain high mobility. Okay, so when they yeah. move, oh, so it lets your units and stuff like go under buildings, even your monster, like Orgadric, can walk through one of his tunnels and. And he's, a, and he's a destroyer. Yeah, he's a destroyer. Cool. Um, so he does that kind of stuff. And then when he goes into hyper mode, he just stops doing anything like that. And he just goes to way better attack stats and his fists get power gorge. And he keeps his, his personal speed stuff. Mm -hmm. So he keeps sprint in both forms. But he goes from trying to be sneaky and keeping on your side, helping out people, and then just going full 
all the way crazy. He's also the one of the fastest monsters, but he has less hit points because of that. What's his speed? Okay. Um, Do you I remember? I can't remember off the top seven? of my head. I think, I think it might be seven. Okay. Is he ninja? Is he ninja fast or faster than ninjas? I think, I think he's ninja fast. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Now, there's been a question coming up in chat a lot, and I'm not asking you to resolve it right now, but this mm -hmm. is so that people will know. People have been asking about a, a fling rules clarification. Is that something you know about? And something that you I wouldn't... thought that Travis and I clarified the fling thing earlier, but maybe there's a new fling thing I haven't seen. Well, Frothy the Cat mentions, check the Mon Park forums. Yeah. There was a, there was yeah. a fling question uh, a month or two ago that Travis and I, I think, cleared up, but there might be a new one that I haven't seen today. Okay. But now, now you're aware of it. Yeah. Travis is so, supposed to make me aware of things uh no Travis. oh and travis doesn't want me to resolve it right now i probably shouldn't because i haven't read anything about it <laughs> so that'd be good i have been busy awesome. getting everything ready for adepticon so yes. rex asks uh will all of the 1.0 factions be in 2.0 specifically we've seen basically all of them except for savage swarm and elementals and the answer i think is that we're not answering that right now right? um so i would love to at least touch on all those classic factions yeah and that's why we're doing kraken octus and hammer clack now because mm -hmm. we had a chance to shift around some things with the original plan and the and and when things change we were like well, we can squeeze those two monsters in in the spring of this year, and then we can make more plans. Okay. Sure. So I, I really want to do Mucostis because I just I love his weird big fat. Do the bug giant belly. bug. Do the giant bee. You want the giant bee. I everyone want the giant knows. Bee. Everyone knows you want the giant bee, but I like the big. Do the giant bee. I like Oz. the big fat weird beetle personally, and a lot of people like the rhino. Oz. The rhino beetle guy. Do the bee. Z the a lot. <sighs> And then um, Tectomach or or one of the other elemental champions might be one of those one-off releases sometime. But we're not talking about scheduling for that. Because right. we're also not talking about like brand new monsters that are coming and entirely new ideas that are going to be thrown into the game. Because cool. right. the next thing we got going on is um, Empire of the Apes, which we solicited. Yep. And Will then, that be at Adepticon? Uh, no, no. It's just a little too far out. Okay. No. Yep. Just a little too far out. And but, then Ubercore after that. Maybe. Something at Kingdom Con. Uh, Maybe. Probably not. Cool. Maybe. But yeah, so right now I'm, we're, we're focusing on, on wrapping up the Empire of the Apes and getting Ubercore sorted, and then we'll talk about the future of Mod Pac. There's a great question. Colossal Smurf says, will the original factions get all of the old original four and five monsters? And I think the answer is that no. We, so we, we did announce that early on. We want to do some, but we also want to do new stuff, right? Uh, but a lot of those, especially the first faction mm -hmm. monsters, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they all had a body share. Like Armadax had the other guy with the weird just head swap. Like to, to make those molds cheap for plastic and stuff, there was mm -hmm. a lot of body mm -hmm. sharing. That's why in canonically, 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 in, in the story, every once in a while my Midwestern voice pops out. Is that how um, you say it there? No, uh, it's weird. <laughs> so that's why Laser Knight. That's why Laser Knight gets killed in the story. Laser Knight died canonically. Yes, canonically. So Laser Knight was a, a like a body, a mostly body share with one of the other two. So he X was the or, Sturgis of Monpok. So, so he died in the background. So you're probably not going to see Zorog, which is Rogzor backwards, <laughs> and it's just Rogzor with giant claws instead of giant gun hands, and those kind of things. Unless we reimagine those models and do them entirely new as their own kind of concept. But we're not going to go back and just like redo the body swap. Hashtag rip Sturgis. Okay. Yeah, I don't... Sturgis had nothing to do with that. No, okay. but... But yeah. Well, awesome. Thanks, Oz. Yeah, no been problem. been good talking about Mompok. Take, take your mat. mat. Take this mat. And you'll be at Adepticon I'll with I'll be us. at Adepticon, and I'm going to have this at Adepticon with me. All right, and you bring yeah. your Mompok army? Yeah. And Travis is not allowed army. to steal it. Yeah. So if you want to come play Mompok with the lead developer of Monster Apocalypse on the new mats, uh, come hang mm -hmm. out with us at Adepticon. We'll be in our yep. room. And we're running events the whole time the whole for time. both Company of Iron and, and Mompok. And War Machine. And, and War Machine. Yep. So I'll be in that events hall a lot. Um, I might be running things and judging things because I might not be able to play a game, just drop of a hat. But I'll have my mom pocket army there. Yeah, so I'll, I'll make I'll, I'll make sure he has yeah. time. I I just comped a thousand dollars worth of monster pocket. I comped did. all of protectors uh -huh. and and like fifteen sixteen buildings. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that I'll have any of that painted by <laughs> mom You're or by the in three days. I, it's mom pocket models. They paint up like yeah. that, bro. Kraken Octus. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye, Oz. <laughs>
lead writer. You've known, he's, he's, a, he's a cornerstone of Privateer Press, a foundational piece of it. One of the best people we have here, yeah. Doug Seacat. Mm -hmm. Is that, that a better is, opening? That is, you like that? that? Is, I mean, that I meant all, all that. None of that was, was set. That is all true. Hello. Um, before we jump in this, there's a question that popped up that I want to hit up real fast. Okay. And it was about Oblivion. Okay. Uh, and it's not related to the lore, but somebody said, what's in the Oblivion box? And I want to answer that real quick, because we mentioned this okay. previously. Yeah, I don't know what we've revealed. So. Uh, in it, the box set is the Hermit of Hengehold miniature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. There's going to be cards used in the narrative campaign system that's included in the Oblivion book. There is a updated rules digest that's going to have uh, new rules and streamlined rules of the core of War Machine and Hordes. And then there's the Oblivion book itself, which is packed full of lore and fiction and storyline. Right. The Infernals themselves, uh, a bunch of basically, uh, I believe, Order of Illumination and people that are going to be fighting against the Infernals. Yeah, other allies in the fight. Yeah, you're going to see basic classic model entries like you used to see in the anthology books. Uh, somewhat. Somewhat. It's actually, they're more, it's more similar to the... The Grinkin the, book, right? Well, or actually, no, it's it's most similar to what we were doing in No Quarter Prime oh, yeah. with the... Oh, okay. uh, yep with our forces of war machine or forces of hordes sections, it, uh, we're kind of approaching the material that way as kind of like essays, but they include what are basically model entries. But what I mean by that is that the rules for those model entries are not going to be like right there with right. the art and the fiction. There's actually gonna be an index later that has all those rules, because rules change with CID and stuff like that. Yep. So we kind of put that at the back of the book in case you wanted to see them all. Right. But all the stuff you're mainly working on is gonna be this like sort of great yeah, encyclopedia of information. It's supposed to be kind of, yeah, like the, um, I guess the last thing we did kind of like it would have been maybe the Cephalix um, PDF only book. Yeah, but yeah. where we're trying to give it back now, there were normal model entries in that book, but the idea being we're mm -hmm. getting into the background of this group in a lot of depth and trying to explain things that we've never explained before. Besides uh, myself, I'm pretty sure that just made like a ton of people really happy. Yeah, <laughs> this this book has got me legitimately excited because I do love our setting and our fluff, and it's been a while sure. since we've done a book like this. And they they they're what I grew up on in War Machine. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it was the mm -hmm. style of book. I, I I would have loved for us to do something like um, the Grimkin book with this, but I think um, uh, the notion of trying to do such strange art and treatment and stuff, it just didn't, it, we, no. we, that, we wanted to no, be, because we wanted it, to it has to touch on more separate. than just one specific yeah. uh, Especially topic. once we were combining yeah. uh, things like the um, Order of Illumination and so yeah. on. Yeah. Right. So, and we have the Archons to cover too, yes. which we, everybody knows is in the book. They saw them in the art finally. Right. Um, so, somebody uh, asked if the hermit that's coming in the box is Chuck Dogwood. The answer is no. It, no. This is a different character than Chuck uh, Dogwood. Uh, but there, there is a good question that Pronto Hornblower has that I care about. I don't know if you'll be able to answer or not. Any chance there will be strange light workshop information in it? I don't, I don't think, so, think right? directly, no. kind of somewhat indirectly. Because I I'll need, I need more of that. But, but, you know, are we going to get into my my thing? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I, 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 I do <laughs> think there's a lot of great content in uh, Oblivion for people. Um, we're still, I'm still kind of hammering on it right now. We're, I'm kind of in the midst of it, just working on some some descriptions of the Archons now. is really exciting to see some of the art uh, yeah. showing up for that. I like how you snuck that into the background. Yeah, they got their first look. That's why I was trying to bring it up. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so so segue, segueing from all of that sure, into sure. your topic today. So uh, just to be a little more precise, what I decided I wanted to talk about is how um, writing and literacy is a trap for the Infernals. So words and writing are a trap. Oh. So what do you think of that? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so hold on. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quote Getz. Words are stupid. <laughs> words, so words are dangerous. The, t the topic is words and writing mm -hmm. are a trap for the Infernals or from, By the, the infernals. from the Infernals? Yes. And in particular, uh, runic, write, runic magic, runic writing is basically a trap from the Infernals. Okay. Um, one of the things that we had a chance to get into, it was kind of fun, just it happened a few days ago. Um, uh, I had written a section for the Oblivion book on um, basically why writing is important to the Infernals and why, they, why contracts are important. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the ideas was that uh, when you write a contract down and you sign it, you're kind of taking an idea and making it tangible. Right. You're, you're, you're fixing it in, in time and space. You're, you're, you're making an agreement. Like when you sign onto an infernal contract, now you're locked in. You mm -hmm. know, that's become a, a tangible thing that now you're, it's, it's almost like their contracts can change reality. Uh, that's kind of how their magic works because magic is sort of will becoming reality. Okay. And, um, but anyway, so I, I'd worked on this section and then all of a sudden, uh, Jason Souls, who was reading it, came like rushing into my office, very excited, talking about 
uh, language being a trap. <laughs> and, uh, and he had some good points, which was uh, one of the things that we have in the setting. Uh, you know, there's the ancient Black Kingdom of Mord, mm -hmm. which is this sort of ancient, mysterious evil that predates even the Orgoth. And uh, one of the ideas with Mord is that there was necromancy going on in Mord, and they were using these like glyphs that we see in Crix now uh, to animate the dead. And we've shown in the background that um, that the that the infernals might have been behind the magic in Mord. I was about to ask because humans learn magic as a response to the Orgoth invasion as part of the rebellion in general, widespread. Yes, and you're, and, and there's a direct connection. Um, so so we kind of have shown that like the first sort of humans in Western Imran to practice magic were the Mord, who were doing necromancy, the, the Dark Lords of Mord. They were also affiliated with um, with Everblight, but even before Everblight came and hung out with them, they were doing some magic. And um, the idea is that uh, later, you know, centuries later, when uh, Thamar, the dark goddess, was looking, uh, she was an occultist, she was looking into uh, various forms of occultism, she investigated the ruins of Mord. And um, some of the, in those ruins, she found um, references to a being called, I think his name is uh, Teldequorin, who's the sounder at the gates, which is a really powerful infernal being. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, the runes that she got in the, the runes she got in the ruins. <laughs> the runes hard she got in the say. ruins, got it. Uh, those uh, helped her create her own alphabet called Telgesh. And, um, I like Telgesh Mark. And the Telgesh became <laughs> kind of fundamental to um, the human arcane alphabets that came later that were formalized by people like um, Kerwin, who, who's sort of the inventor of alchemy and mechanica. And so you have this idea that, you know, some of the inherent mystical mat, you know, runes that all of the Warcasters and everybody uses in the Iron Kingdoms has its origins in, in infernal writings, in infernal gifts that were given, you know, to these various civilizations over time. Yeah. And that Thamar maybe incorporated that into into magic. And so you can imagine, like if you if if you're thinking like a hacker, you know, or a, mm. <laughs> a programmer, you could set up sort of some backdoor action with mm. those runes. Like you're you're giving humanity access to magic, but maybe you could make some little squiggles in there, make some some turns that would open up things for the infernals, make it easier for them to hack into the human brain, maybe send dreams, send messages. Uh, or just make them so reliant on something you created that sure. you can then. So can I ask you, we're talking about the, this language being a trap, but this applies to human language specifically. Sure. So like troll language. They're fine. <laughs> like, so so lang language in writing is not a trap for trolls scorn. Well, I mean, Unless you want to get really conspiracy minded about it, I do. <laughs> so, like, but no, for the most part, I am talking about human magic. We okay. we are, uh, for the most part, a lot of the infernal connection to magic is human based, um, uh, and a lot of that you could you could blame on Menoth for not giving humanity magic. Well, he knew so better. I think you're blowing people's <laughs> they, minds with the, with the pronunciations <laughs> right now. <laughs> so, like, I keep seeing stuff in chat in chat like so, Thamar, Menoth. Yeah. I just, I, I love it. Okay. I love but, knowing I mean, how you know, they're there, supposed there's to be. There's, there's different ways. I, I honestly think there's legitimately different ways to pronounce each of these sure. things. But let, let's dial like You've got your weird Hungerford accent on things. Hell like, yeah. <laughs> let, let's be honest for a second though. Minoff did nothing wrong. The like, hashtag Menoth did nothing wrong because, like, he, well, <laughs> now I don't think that if Menoth had given humanity some magic earlier, then Thamar wouldn't have had to give it to him later. But look what they've done with magic. They've done a lot of cool stuff. You got and a lot of jacks. bad stuff. I don't know. I think. I think that Menoth was was a bit of a bad parent. I mean, you know, he was no. <laughs> he just left people out in the wilds no. naked. Yeah, because sometimes they, if the kids walk in towards the outlet with the fork in their hand, you're no, like, no, well, they'll he, learn. He, yeah, that's, what, that's his approach. <laughs> let, him, let him approach the outlet with the fork. Yeah. No safety devices. I was but, raised in the bayou. That's how I was raised. I came out sure, fine. Sure, sure. Speaking of debts, he, uh, he says, I think the defiers want to have a word with you, Hunger. <laughs> right. Yeah, look. It, there, there's a lot of debates about you know divine parenting methods. I do think that maybe there's something in between what the Iosans got, which was mm -hmm. maybe getting a little too much, a little too so early. So how, how much of the and, Iosan stuff is and, based on the Infernal stuff? Uh, that's, a, that's a whole other topic that okay, we're going to get gotta, into okay. right now. Um, but yeah, there's going to be a lot of uh, uh, mysteries solved and, and, and new mysteries introduced um, with the Oblivion so, book. But I do like the idea because we've kind of shown that the infernals exist in this like far off realm beyond Cain and Urcane, and there's like these huge barriers of entry for them to affect Cain that 
the the use of this runic language could have helped you know open that door a little bit, kind mm, of mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. crack the door. Uh, they have they have such getting, wonderful things. To getting show you. into the minds of these arcanists who might be completely benevolent, you know, like you could be somebody who's trying to do good with magic. But then you hear that little whispering voice, maybe in your dreams, It'd be yeah. like, maybe, maybe, maybe you want to do more. Maybe so, you don't have enough power. I got a follow-up question. How about a little shortcut? Maybe you could sign this contract. You said the, so. The con, it's all about the contract, and the contract sure. is will will becoming reality. Sure. Now, mm -hmm. can't when there's a problem, I like to destroy it. Is there a way <laughs> to destroy the con? Like if the if the act of writing the contract makes it real, is there a way to break the contract? Like well, destroy that, it. That's a good question, and, and the infernals would say no. The, okay. the, the contract is binding. But one of the ideas kind of that we're showing with um, things like the Archons is um, the notion of the twins maybe, maybe not wanting to follow through on some of the things they agreed to. Okay. Like, so the notion is um, you could, you could, if you're a god, you could be like, you know, maybe I signed that contract, maybe I'm not going to pay you. <laughs> and right, so, and, then, so, and what happens? And then, then the then the infernal send their collectors, and and that's where we are. That's, that's where we are now with Oblivion. That's where we stand now. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so so basically, this is the debt collectors showing up and being like, yeah, they're like, we, uh, we called y'all. <laughs> yeah, there's terms that you agreed to. We left twenty messages, <laughs> yeah, and you exactly. didn't deliver. So yeah, Thamar has not been returning calls. She is not. They're spiritual helping. repo man. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, so you're you're right. you're leading next Wednesday's chat because we're not. Um, yeah, I don't know exactly what I'm going to talk about. I'm sure we might get into some infernal stuff um, or talk about gardening or you know. Because I have whatever. so yeah. many questions <laughs> now. <laughs> like as soon as you started talking about the alphabet, like I have like a whole retribution and Iosian. Path oh, there's I have all to go yeah, there's now. all kinds of interesting uh, ramifications because but, between their writing, soulless, like I uh, yeah. Uh, the the chat asks, um, wait, Morrow signed as well. Well, one of the ideas that we've kind of introduced in some of the background materials that both of the twins were involved. Involved in the gift of magic, um, the Thamar was involved with the details, but the notion is it probably wouldn't have worked if Morrow hadn't have signed off on it because Morrow had some power to shepherd humanity. Basically, Menoth had a, had allowed for the twins to exist and had given uh, Morrow some right to shepherd humanity, uh, and so that might be why um, he was able to make a claim to certain souls. Mm. In, his, in the in this bargain. Now, again, I, I think probably Thamar, you know, hand waved a lot of the details of what was going on. You know, it'd be one of those things where he'd be like, "Okay, you said you had an idea to save our faiths from the Orgoth," um, and she's like, "Yeah, I've totally figured it out." Oh yeah. And, and he's like, "Well, do you want to tell me any more?" And she's like, "No, we'll get into it later." <laughs> you know, just follow me. Just we, we so, got it covered. I want a question about the collecting of the souls. So, sure. for a like, normal human living person, an infernal walks up, and I assume just literally rips their soul out of them, right? Well, that's usually not how it happens. How, I mean, how does, how does how is a soul collected? Well, uh, it's complicated. Okay. That could happen if they were already there. Like if you if if an infernal happens already be in the world. Yeah. It's a little easier. They can just walk up to you, kill you. Like during Oblivion, when the infernals yeah. are on the planet, like how, how? That's that's a little easier. They can they can kind of grab loose souls. But normally, um, the infernals have a hard time, you know, being uncane. It's one of the reasons why you have these like gates and summoning rituals and and like while you get while you guys were wrestling in the rules with mm -hmm. having a you know a summoning process that yeah. kind of suggests that like things like horrors can't stick around for too long. Mm -hmm. So the idea is. Um, there's other ways that you can give up your soul through these contracts. Like it'd be like you're if you've captured a soul as an infernalist, you might be able to offer that to the infernals as payment. And there's some um, uh, infernalists we've shown that have been able to kind of defer signing their own soul over for a while. Like maybe you just offer other people's souls, you capture them in soul cages, Crixian style, and you could offer those up as payment. But eventually you might get to a point where you need to offer your own soul. Like and, and that's usually the goal, is eventually you're gonna become, and then your soul becomes marked through the contract. And that's what I'm saying, what, do you just live the rest of your life with your soul still in you until yes. you die and then it yeah. goes to them afterwards? And yeah, the idea is that the marked soul is kind of, um, it's it's not going through the normal process. Like when you when a person dies in Cain, normally the soul will kind of hang out for a little while, mm. and usually, unless there's some kind of weird trauma, they'll turn them into a ghost. Usually, it passes on to the other side, so it goes to Urcane. And so the mark is kind of like something that keeps the soul. Do not pass. Go. Yeah, do not go pass. Directly you, you don't, to you don't, you don't get to go to um, Urcane, but usually it still needs to be collected, and that's where things like the um, the the uh, I'm blanking on the name. Is it just the Soul Hunter or the Soul? 
the spirit, the Soul Stalker. The Soul Stalker. That's mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. I was getting mixed up with it. There's a Crixian <laughs> Cavalry, which is the Soul Hunter. Hunters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, so yeah, the Soul Stalker. I... The whole reason for the Soul Stalker to exist is to like piggyback in on a summons and go around scooping up marked souls that are left behind, you know, kind of like in alleyways and stuff. So if you had like, if you were an infernalist and your soul is marked and you just died of old age or whatever somehow, <laughs> then your soul kind of hangs out until a soul collector comes by or soul harvester comes by and takes it. So two follow-ups on that, just so, and I've seen people ask this before, does having your soul caught in something, so if you're in a convergence automaton or right. if you're in a soul cage, do either of those mess with, if say you were a marked soul, Sure. You got transferred into a convergence. Uh, I forgot the name of the actual like crystal in them that that holds right. them. Right? Does that mess with this process at all? Uh, to a degree, but I mean, uh, basically, it would just mean that the 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 soul harvester has to smash, you know, the thing, the, the thing that you're in, and then get. But get when you we, if you're like in a soul cage, like your body's dead, so you're not getting pulled off to them. You're going to stay it's, in this. It's cage. definitely another way to keep a, a soul in the world. And so the uh, yeah the whole idea with like the convergence of Cirrus is their souls are not going anywhere uh, once you're put into a machine body. Lich state. lords, so on. And yeah, so, so lich so, lords is very similar. So convergence is like if you make a deal as an infernalist, live as good a life you can, then you then join the cult of Cirrus. That could be a way to try to off transcend <laughs> or <laughs> and just live as a robot. Or but a then lich, eventually or maybe maybe an infernal thing you know, like barges into your workshop. Just walk into the ocean <laughs> and smashes into you. You're a robot. You ain't gotta breathe. Walk into the Meridius. I don't think the Infernals have any problems going to the bottom of the ocean. Oh. <laughs> so I don't think you can avoid it that way. Like, I know you've already given your soul over to the Infernals. There's usually... Because they make me into nothing. <laughs> sure. So you, so you haven't sold your soul, right? You have. It's, no, but I'm just saying, like... <laughs> it's a, it's like, a deferred payment. Let, let's, let's, you know, you're oh, you're, Jimmy you're, the Dirt Farmer. Dirt, you, haven't been, the dirt farmer. you haven't been offered a contract. Yeah, you're probably right? not very useful to them. But, yeah. but right? anyway, go ahead. So like, <laughs> so, But I'm like, my soul... I like it. <laughs> I, want, I, want, I want to hold on to it, and I want it to go where it's supposed to go. Do you have any recourse sure. in the Iron Kingdoms? Die near a priest, yeah, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then they'll give you last rites. Once, once you pass to Urkane, usually you're safe. Yeah. Usually. So you can just like moonwalk past that line and be like, <laughs> so, hey, give me, dog. Legitimately. But, but I mean, that's if you haven't signed your soul over. Right. Right. So yeah. the, the safest place in the Iron Kingdoms is the Protectorate of Minoth. It is filled with priests. It's it's a good way to go, and they have those cool like the um, you know the reclaimers have their cool little like meta fixes. Yeah, mm-hmm. just kind of like bop, you know, bop bop one right down. Yeah, pass you on through. Yeah, yeah. they they have they have an accelerated. Can uh, they can uh, they process. undo a soul contract? No. Okay. Not normally. So Not I know normally. we're running a little late on time, and we got to finish up. Yeah. But I have one last question. There's for plenty you. of questions. It's a big topic. That's why yeah, I wanted to huge. keep it yeah. fixed mostly on the trap of literacy. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it's good to know that like the the more savage races, like the trollkins and stuff, that this does not affect them as much. No. Maybe. No. Ambiguity. <laughs> 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 but and their 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 uh, their mystical writings were, did not originate for the most part from Infernals, as far as we know. As far as we know. Um. So, last thing, on the topic of language and runic magic, did yeah. the Orgoth have a language? Yes. Okay. And the, and the Orgoth, um, this is something that we've kind of touched on before. Um, there's, there's a pretty solid uh, hypothesis that the Orgoth were themselves empowered by a different infernal society than the one that is interacting with Western Imran. And so, <laughs> so, so the, the conflict between the Orgoth and Western Imran and then the Nonacrean Order, which is the infernals that... Um, that bargained with with Thamar, uh, that that might represent an infernal conflict, a, a conflict between infernals of one group mm-hmm. and another, and so basically each side empowered different humans to have yeah. magic. So which which leads to my follow up about language. How when in in our world Latin can be the root of many different languages. If sure. the infernals were sort of the uh, hacking these different uh, languages of humans, mm-hmm. is infernal the root of Many different human languages. Not directly, okay. not directly, because we're talking mostly. I mean, I was kind of being facetious about all language. You can be literate without necessarily. Sure, sure, into sure. It. It's mostly the arcane alphabets, the the mystical okay, alphabets, specifically. Oh, yeah. And okay. and even though we've we've sometimes used those in art and fiction to kind of show like here's Signar in writing. That's really not like that's not really. It, the mystical alphabets are mostly used for spells and magic, not for 
writing like a letter to grandma. Sure. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, or at least well, not a good idea. So cool. Well, before we, we send you off, Doug, is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Or any questions you saw up there you wanted to hit No, with uh, well, we'll see how things go uh, next Wednesday. And, you know, make, be sure to tune in. We'll, we'll talk about whatever. I'll try to answer as many questions as I can. Is it just mm -hmm. you by yourself or is it going to be like you? I think Josh is going to, Josh uh, Cologne is also going to. He'll be back from me. vacation then? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So. Um, Make sure y'all hang out because Josh and Doug are both like two of the best people at Privateer Press. And, uh, and, and I do want to keep some stuff like uh, for the book. So I'm not going to necessarily get into the details of everything, but there's a sure. lot. There's a lot of juicy bits in in the upcoming Oblivion well, material that I think uh, people will enjoy. If you into. spoil the end of the movie, then when people read the book, it's already done, right? Like they, <laughs> right. they need to like learn some as they go through. Sure, it. sure. So. And and there'll still be plenty of questions. Uh, you know, there's a lot of mysteries. Yeah. Yep. All right. Cool. Travis That's is it. obviously going to plan one of his breaks at Adepticon. <laughs> sure. Awesome. Well, All thanks, right. Doug. Yeah, thanks absolutely. for being on. We'll see you later. I have so many more questions Beware now. Beware words. I'll be in your office <laughs> later. <laughs> but those are words themselves, Doug. We have to use words to warn others about words. Inter Trap. Interpretive dance. Uh, our next guest is mm -hmm. going to be John Swinkle's oh, convention manager oh, to talk cool. about upcoming conventions. Hooray! We, we do have uh, some shows we're going to this year. <laughs> just a few. Just, just I've lost track number. of time, and that's because I just came back from a show, and I'm going to a show next week. The only reason that time has any meaning for me is because I have to schedule all this stuff, and if, yeah, so, yeah. That's a thing. Um, so Adepticon is next week. Yep. We will be leaving on Tuesday, and we'll be there, and we'll come back basically the week after, because Adepticon's a big show. Um, tons of fun, though. Uh, we already spoiled a little bit of uh, the stuff we'll have there. Uh, but And then Oz touched on some events. Uh, mm -hmm. We will have uh, some narrative events for Company of Iron. We'll have a narrative event for Monster Apocalypse. And we'll have a narrative event for War Machine and Hordes, in addition to uh, qualifiers for Iron Gauntlet, all kinds of other uh, tournaments and trappings as far as, uh, not infernal trappings, uh, that Travis set up. So mm -hmm. Travis put a lot of work into getting those events set up for Adepticon. So thank you, Travis, because I know that you're in chat. So everybody press F to show respect for Travis. Um, he's not gone. What's up? Why are we pressing F for Travis? He's, he's not still, gone. He's, still, he's not, he's not he's, gone. He's, he's there, and we'll see him there. Uh, towards the end, uh, no, stop effing. <laughs> Travis isn't gone. Stop it, chat. Yes. <laughs> Why would you throw Hamilton? That's abuse. Pagani's gonna lake every time. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't, don't Tony, bring Tony, don't, bring don't that you back pick him, him back up. Don't don't bring. Somebody that back asked to if him. Boar's Gate is making a return. <laughs> Yay, Hamilton's better. So I asked if Boar's Gate's making a return for the narrative event. Uh, no, we're bringing a new narrative event. Uh, we're going to build ourselves a little bit of a city. I'm talking more like traditional sized buildings mm -hmm. uh, because we're doing part of Stormbreak as the War Machine narrative event. So this is prior to the siege of Merwin. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of the, the farming uh, villages near Merwin where several of the forces are uh, converging to move into the city. So uh, this is going to be a... We're probably going to split up into three teams. So I don't want to reveal everything yet, but it's going to be it's going to be fun and it's going to be different. Yes. Will it be streamed? Uh, unfortunately, we will not be streaming cool. at at uh, Adepticon. Um, and then basically, we get like a minute to like take a deep breath, then start panicking again as we head to Kingdom Con April 11th through 14th, mm -hmm. uh, which is the 10th anniversary of the show and unfortunately the last one. It is the last one. Yeah. It's the Ro last one. Ross uh, announced that it is his last one that yep. he's running. Unless someone else decides to pick it up and run with it, but I think that's or probably do, already been decided by now. Or, or, or do something else in that space. Or do something uh, else in that space, yeah. Because you know, like, we like having a cool event to go to in California, FYI. Um, but, so we're gonna, do, we're gonna do it as big as possible there as well. So there'll be you know, new pre-releases there, there'll be more events, you'll definitely get your Mod Pock on, Oz is gonna go with me to that one. Uh, Jmix9292 says, John, where did you get your shirt? It's actually an old one that uh, I squirreled away. It was one of the original Monpog shirts when yeah. they first came out back yeah. in the old days. Part of the old Smash Guide. Yep. Um, and then basically, after that, the next one that I have to look forward to and everybody here has to look forward to, along with hopefully all of you, is Lock and Load, which is June 21st through the 23rd. Tony just brought up the graphic. Uh, first chance to get the Infernals. Uh, and... So many events, and we're gonna have surprises there, special guests, like all that kind of cool stuff. Is ACD before that? 
Uh, ACD is in May, yes. And that's, so, a, that's a retailer show, so some of our retailer and distributor friends from ACD will see them there in May. For those of you in Madison, Wisconsin, ACD, uh, great distributor show. Mm -hmm. I'm sure mm -hmm. I'll, I'll probably end up being there. It'll be you and me. Um, Can confirm. There is a restaurant down the road from where they host it called the, the, old Gold fashion. Fat, the Old Fashioned. Mm -hmm. They have mm -hmm. the best cheese curds I've ever had in my life. If you're ever going to Madison, Wisconsin, go to the Old Fashioned. Great drinks, great food, legitimately amazing cheese curds. I will be there... The whole time. Yeah. And not ironically at all, one of the best old fashions I've ever had. Yes. So during they, they have a house one that they do that is fantastic. Yeah. It's 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 legitimate. A couple of questions that have popped up. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody else asked, will the big tournaments, uh, Adrian Brown asked, will the big tournaments for Adepticon be streamed? We're not streaming at Adepticon, yep. unfortunately. So apologies for that. Patrick Wilson, are there plans on more stuff for Company of Iron? We will be continuing to support Company of Iron. There will be more mm -hmm. cool stuff coming out for it, more mm -hmm. events, but uh, nothing we've announced in the immediate future. Right now, everything is very much like Mon Pock Oblivion Riot Quest. Mm -hmm. So, but don't worry. Yeah, it's, it's not off the plate. It's just there's other stuff going on right now. Missing Task says, will there be any of the Grimkin pre-releases at Adepticon? Yes. Cool. Yep. I, I will have Baron Tunglick. Um, I... May have the piggyback officer, and I may have the grave ghoul. I'm not sure. Yeah, and I, I'm waiting to hear back today. I will have a final list of what I will have at Adepticon, and that will actually go out on our mailing list later today. We are trying to get an update out today for a dynamic update for the Grimkin release uh, mm -hmm. to go public because that includes the change to the theme forces to allow like the free Malady Man and allow them into theme forces because they'll be at uh, Adepticon, and so those theme forces that got changed around that we're trying to, to fix. Yeah, so, and well. then Exoskeletal uh, mentions a great question. He says, any EU events, guys? Um, there's some that are run by the community over there, like the Welsh Masters, which I think just happened, I believe, or it's just about to. I've lost track of all time. Yeah, um, so that's somewhere in the recent past, recent future, I'm not 100% sure. Um, However, in addition to some of those ones that are run by the community out there, I have been talking with our new CEO, Bob Watts, mm -hmm. uh, who has some operational capacity over there about what we might be able to do in the not-too-distant future. Um, and I hope to have more information on that soon. Sweet. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and wrap things up. Uh, just to remind everybody, Mini Crate, I just want to pop that one back on the screen real fast if you mm -hmm. can, Tony. Just because mm -hmm. the, uh, the Bayushi Soju is, is running out of time, April 5th. Pick that one up. Get your Ancestral Guardians, the angels. They look super sweet. Pick up your Bride of Arcadius if you don't already have your VIP. You go to mini-create.com to check them all out. I hadn't gotten to see the uh, the Ancestral Guardian angel yet, so finally getting to see it, I'm like, oh, that's even cooler than the sketches. Yeah, no, it looks that's, it looks that's phenomenal. A great model. Yeah, it looks better with googly eyes. Like when you put a <laughs> pair of like slightly oversized googly eyes on it, and you write "Don't blink" on the base. Your opponent will be so distracted by what you're doing, they will instantly lose the game and clock themselves. That, that, that's real. Uh, so we are not nerfing googly eyes in, no. in Steamroller. They can't um, be nerfed. Yeah, so just they, heads up they, on that. That is actually impossible. Uh, Oswald Doug, Dog and Twitch chat says, can we get Bob Watt on Primecast? If the timing works out, um, I don't see why not. Yeah. I'm sure he'd be happy to. And Lars Malik asks, are there any new buildings coming out? In fact, join us for next Primecast. Because we're going to be talking about exactly that, the, the monuments. We're going to start mm -hmm. talking about all the Statue of Liberty, the Imperial State Building, all that cool stuff that's coming out. We showed a bunch of that at Gamma. And I should have most, if not all, three of those at Adepticon. Yeah. So join us next Primecast, which Tony is April 19th, I believe. April 19th. And April 12th is going to be the rumble between uh, Jeff and myself playing a bit of War Machine and Hordes. Jeff will be bringing uh, Grimkin with all the new releases that just dropped. So if you want to join us, mm -hmm. make sure you mm -hmm. see us there. And uh, until next time, we'll see you all next week at Adepticon if you're there. If not, join Doug on Wednesday and we'll be back to regular stream schedule after that the following week. Thanks for being here with everybody. Absolutely. Thanks, Bye. Gus. Bye-bye. Where are we going?